parents and dear children to our 13th annual day celebrations. Our journey this far has been full of triumphs and accomplishments, keeping pace with the ever-changing educational practices, student requirements, and their ambitions. At the Dhirubhai Ambani International School, we aim to make learning fun-filled, enjoyable, and contemporary in the modern context, but keeping in mind our rich Indian values. We provide our children with an environment that is sensitive, reflective, and empowering to develop excellence in academics and strength of character. Dear parents, this evening, the stage is all set to unfold a celebration of vision, a starburst of color, joy, and splendor. So join us, ladies and gentlemen, for the Song of Prithvi, a musical fantasy spun out of Rudyard Kipling's The Jungle Book, with shadows of the Walt Disney production, The Lion King, peeping in and out. Sit back, relax, and sing along as Prithvi, or the man cub, as the forest beings call him, is abandoned in a forest, rescued and adopted by a kind-hearted elephant family. Watch Prithvi grow up from a toddler to a strapping youth with the help of his mentors and his friends, and watch him fight his foes. But as you get engrossed in the tale of Prithvi, you will also hear another story that of Prithvi, our earth, crying out to us, to someone, to anyone, to light the lamp of harmony so that she, Mother Earth, may survive. Ladies and gentlemen, the heads, faculty, staff, and students of the Dhirubhai Ambani International School present the Song of Prithvi. Written, designed, and directed by Kalol Banerjee, assistant directors Chetna Singha and Yashasvi Vachani, choreography Santosh Shetty, assistant choreography Payal Joshi and Amit Parmar, music and vocals director Ronit Chatterjee. The costumes that you will see on stage have been designed and tailored by some of our very own gracious parents. A big thank you to all of them. To begin this magical evening, let's start with our school prayer, followed by the felicitations and our chairperson's address. I request our chairperson, Srimati Nita Ambani, and our heads and deputy heads to please come up on stage for the prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the prayer. Ya kundendu tushar har dhala Ya shubra vastra Lokasamastas 
Ambani, heads and deputy heads. I request Srimati Nitambani to remain on the stage for the academic and sports felicitations. Let us begin with our ICSE toppers for the academic year 2014-2015. Shaurya Garg. Shaurya topped our school with 99.4%. Aman Sadiwala. Aman was our second highest scorer with 99%. Ananya Vora. Ananya was our third highest scorer with 98.2%. During the academic year 2014-15, in the IGCSE examinations, we had two world toppers and nine India toppers. Shubhangi Datta. Shubhangi topped the world in physics and she topped India in mathematics and geography. Trisha Thakkar. Trisha topped the world in physics and she topped India in chemistry. Harsh Meswani. Harsh was our India topper in mathematics and in physical education. Sanya Dalal. Sanya was also an India topper in mathematics. Diva Jain. Diva topped India in art and design. Diva has left our school to pursue her schooling at a foreign destination, and her brother will collect the award on her behalf. Shloka Shetty. Shloka was another India topper in business studies. Shivam Shorewala. Shivam topped India in English literature. In the IB diploma examinations held in 2014-2015, we had six children who scored perfect 45 points. We will be awarding two of them this evening. Supriya Kamath. Supriya is currently studying at New York University, Abu Dhabi. Her mother is here to take her award. Anika Limae. Anika is now at University of Chicago, USA, and her father is here to collect her award. We will felicitate our other IB toppers at tomorrow's function. 
During the academic year 2014-15, six of our students bagged the Hindustan Times Scholarship. Today, we will felicitate five of them. Stuti Daga of Class 6B. Tanya Kapoor of Class 7B. Adar Sriram of Class 9A. Gayatri Meswani of Class 9B. And Ishana Khanna of Class 9C. Amay Saxena and Mihir Shah. Amay and Mihir have been part of Team Factor, which won the Connect Award at the international level of the first Tech Challenge. Their team qualified to represent Team India in Sydney, Australia. In sports, some of our winners were Bhaven Shah. Bhaven won a silver medal in chess at the 60th National School Championship representing the state of Maharashtra. Siddharth Sankhe. Siddharth represented Maharashtra and won a gold medal in the 4 by 100 meters medley relay at the Swimming Nationals held in Pune earlier this year. Angad Arneja. Our shooting star Angad won a gold medal at the Interschool National Shooting Championships. Isabel Lobo. Isabel has been the under-14 and under-16 MSSA athletic champion for four consecutive years, winning gold medals in the 200, 400, and 800 meter races. Our DAIS under-19 boys football team have made us proud. Our team became the champions at the Mumbai District Schools football tournament. Thereafter, the team won the second position at the Interzonal Football Championships. We'll introduce you to the team. Captain Riday Vaswani. The other team members are Vedant, Mithil, Dhruv, Moksh, Ravi, Ashutosh, Arav, Sohel, Dane, Pratyush, Mahir, Aditya, Param, and Dhruvin.
That brings us to the end of today's felicitations. Thank you, Srimati Nita Ambani. May I now request our chairperson to please address the parents. Dear parents, teachers and staff, and my dear children, good evening and a hearty welcome to the 13th annual day celebration of Dhirubhai Ambani International School, the time of the year that we all look forward to, children, parents, and teachers. Every annual day of our school is a special occasion filled with festive spirit and excitement. A team, a time beaming with laughter and happiness a joyous celebration of the culmination of our efforts and the splendor of our accomplishments. Friends, our motto, dare to dream, learn to excel, always inspires us to explore limitless possibilities in our quest for knowledge, to reimagine teaching and learning by applying new and innovative methods, to build a happy school where children enjoy learning, a school where leaders of the future are born, a school where learning and excelling is a passion, a place where children are at the heart of everything that we do. For today's children are tomorrow's stars, shining for India. For us, the past 13 years have been a journey of excellence with many major milestones. All along, every recognition has made us humble, and every challenge has re-energized us to be more resolute. Friends, our remarkable results university placements, and sporting and co-curricular achievements, year after year, are the outcome of our collective endeavors. You would be proud to know that our results this year are the best ever that DAIS has achieved. I know I keep repeating myself, year after year, but in pursuit of excellence, our children keep on raising the bar for our school. This year, we have surpassed all our past records in all the three curricula, the ICSC, the IGCSE, and the IB Diploma. This is what truly defines DAIS. Because excellence is a limitless goal. Our ICSC average is 96.19%. 26 children scored 95% and above. And 31 students have scored 92% and above. As you have just seen, our topper has scored 99.4%. The IGCSE examination, 89% of all grades achieved are A stars and A's, as against the world average of 28.78%. Two children have got 10 A stars in all the 10 subjects they appeared for. 16 students have achieved 9 A stars or above. Two of our students have topped the world in physics. And seven have topped in India in mathematics, art and design, business studies,
chemistry, geography, English literature, and physical education. This year, our IB diploma students have achieved an average score of a historic 40 points. A landmark achievement for any school. One that places us amongst the top five IB schools in the world. We are proud to share this honor with King's College School, London, and Anglo-Chinese School, Singapore, amongst others. Six children earned the perfect score of 45, only achieved by 10 students in the whole of South Asia. Our IB Diploma graduates from the class of 2015 have earned admission in the world's top universities like Oxford, Cambridge, Imperial, King's College, LSE, UCL, Stanford, Princeton, Johns Hopkins, Cornell, UPenn, Columbia, and Brown, to name just a few. 41% of our students have received scholarships from leading universities. Hearty congratulations to all our dear children for this exceptional performance. You have made your parents, teachers, and your school very proud. Let's give a big round of applause to all our children. Friends, our children continue to perform exceedingly well in sports and co-curricular activities. They have won several state, national, and international level awards in athletics, swimming, judo, squash, football, cricket, chess, table tennis, and in math, science, and robotics, and many more. Heartiest congratulations to all our children for their extraordinary accomplishments. Let's give a big hand for our young, talented stars. <laughs> Friends, it gives me immense pleasure to share with you that our school's achievements continue to be applauded with accolades from all quarters. For the third consecutive year, DAIS has been ranked India's number one international school by Education World. Your school has been ranked the number one school in Mumbai in the Times School Survey 2015. Our highest ratings are for academic reputation and the quality of our teachers. You will also be delighted to know that for the third time, DAIS has been awarded the best all-round co-educational school in sports in Mumbai. All these are truly great recognitions for our young school. Heartiest congratulations to everyone in the DIS community for these outstanding accomplishments. Dear parents, our focus has always been to provide our children with ample opportunities to develop holistically. Apart from excelling in academics and sports, we would like them to develop their creativity and enjoy various artistic pursuits. Because we believe that the learning of music, dance, theater, and visual arts can create wonders in children's emotional well-being and broaden their perspective. Last year, we introduced drama as a subject from IGCSE class nine onwards. And next year, we will be introducing theater arts in the IB diploma program. To facilitate this, we constructed a state-of-the-art center for performing arts. We hope this new facility 
will enable children to explore and enjoy a variety of performing arts. Our school, our school sports ground is now ready as a world-class all-weather AstroTurf football field, which you're all sitting on now. We have strengthened our security systems to enhance children's safety in the school. And it will be our constant endeavor to provide a caring, safe, and stimulating environment for children to blossom in our school. Dear parents, your faith in us inspires us to go the extra mile for our children. Thank you for believing in the collective dream called Dhirubhai Ambani International School and entrusting us with your children. Your belief has always motivated us to do our best for the children. I hope we can always live up to the trust and confidence that you have placed in us. Thank you, parents, each one of you, for supporting us always. Children, let's give a big round of applause to our wonderful parents. My dear teachers, you are the real architects of our school. Your commitment and dedication have woven the success story of our school. Thank you for being motivators and mentors to our children. Our school is honored to have exceptional teachers like you. A big round of applause for all our teachers. Friends, Mother Earth is a gift to mankind, selflessly caring and nurturing, making life beautiful. Unfortunately, we take her for granted through our inconsiderate actions. Since 1990, nearly half of the world's forests have been lost. It is estimated that each year, each one of us uses about seven trees. So between all of us gathered here today, this year itself, we have cut about 14,000 trees. If all of us can take it as a mission to plant more trees, we can not only replace, but outgrow the lost trees for our future generations. In 1910, India homed about 40,000 majestic tigers who roamed free in our story jungles. Today, we are left with just 2,226 tigers. Our magnificent elephants have been subjected to the same. Today, we have only 25,000 elephants in India. Nature is signaling to us in an extremely, to us an extremely alarming situation. But there is hope. Today's production, the Song of Prithvi, presented by our younger children of classes lower kg to eighth, is a calling to each one of us to reverse this trend and to be the change in protecting Mother Nature, as we need to hold on to our dreams for a better planet. Every single child is a part of this production. These little performers seek your participation and appreciation. So let's cheer and clap for them. Dhirubhai Ambani International School proudly presents the Song of Prithvi. Thank you. I am Prithvi. This is my song. I have gifted you, my children, animals and men, with an abundance of air, water, mountains, forests, meadows, to play and live in. My heart was so full of joy for so many years. 
since the day I created this paradise. But today my heart cries in aching sadness. Men are killing my other children, taking by force what is not theirs, destroying my mountains and rivers and lakes and forests just to satisfy their lust for more and more and more and more. My paradise is now being lost. I am being pushed down to the depths of choking darkness. I will soon die. Today, I cry for help, for someone to make me live again. For someone to light the lamp of happiness and peace. For someone to give birth once more to light.
The dazzling golden jackal who brings laughter to my forest. You've heard it so many times that I wonder how you haven't got bored to death by now. Especially when you're on that story yourself. Oh, and that is why it's my favorite story. Because, because I'm in it. How can I ever be bored of listening to a story like that? Can't wait to hear it again and again and again. Come on, Spirit of the Forest, get going. Get going! Oh, get going! All right then. There are countless stories of forests from the time that old man time was not so old. Happy stories and sad stories. Kind stories and cruel stories. Stories of animals that live in forests and stories of men that encroach into forests. But whatever be the type of stories, they are all strange stories. And the story that we are about to tell you tonight is one of the strangest of the strange that ever happened in the forest of Pench in India. The story of a man-child, or a man-cub as they called him in the forest, and his animal family, friends, and also foes. The story of Prithvi, the man-cub, of Bagheera, the black panther, Baloo, the sloth bear, and Ka, the enchanting cobra. The story of the elephants, Raksha and Shaktiman, who adopted and loved Prithvi as their own calf. And of Akela, the fearless leader of all wolf packs. And of course, the story of Sher Khan, the ferocious tiger, the one who started it all. Ah, I remember it as if it all happened yesterday. Though, actually, it happened many, many years back by the fringes of one of the densest forests in central India. The village folks of Sioni were having a carnival. A mela on the auspicious day of Raksha Bandhan, when Shere Khan made his deadly appearance. I'm going to have a good meal. The villagers will be sleepy with all the food and drink and dancing by the time evening falls. It will be easy to catch one. I will wait. It is time for me to pay Sioni a visit. Good 
this strange feeling that my family is going to be expanded soon i am going to adopt this tiny one i will call him prithvi so he has been given to me by mother earth herself i knew it are you mad raksha has a full moon got to you how can a man cub be part of an elephant family why not haven't you seen man family is adopting cats and dogs and goats and horses and so many other what they call animals so why can't an elephant family adopt a man cub but what will our other elephant herd say what will bears and leopards and rhinos and tiger say the langurs will laugh at you but most importantly what will akela the leader of the wolf pack say remember under the rotation policy of our forest parliament the wolves will rule the jungle council for 5 summers more do you not know 
that for any baby to be adopted and inducted into the fold of jungle beings requires the permission of the ruling council? Why should a Kela and his packs agree to let a man cub be part of an elephant family? Raksha, let us not do this. Let us just leave the man cub here and go home. No, don't you see? The little baby looks at me and smiles. Poor man cub. He thinks I'm his mother. I will not leave him alone in this forest. Alone he will be when the council rejects a petition to adopt. Have you thought of that? My darling Mr. Fathead, now you listen to me. I also know our rules. We need to take council approval before the baby is five summers old. We have plenty of time. By then, my little sugar pie will be the sweetheart of the forest. No one will object to his becoming an elephant man. My dear wife of so many moons, listen to me. I heard from Tabaki, the golden jackal, that Sher Khan is again hunting in this part of the forest. I think he must have killed his man cub's parents and left this little piece here to snack on later. Sher Khan may be a little lame, but he's still a tiger. What if he comes back? Wisely spoken, Shakti Man, the wise elephant. I'm back to claim what belongs to me. Give me back the man cub. No, the man cub is now my son. I have named him Prithvi. He feeds with my other children and will soon run and roam with them. Be gone, Sher Khan. Don't you even dare look at my child again. How dare you talk to the king of the forest like that? Before I tear you apart, she elephant, give me back the man cup for your own good. Silence, Sher Khan. We are free people and take orders from no one. If Raksha says the man cup is a child, then it is so. By killing this man cup's parents, you have defied the laws of the jungle. That no man should ever be killed without any reason. For when men are killed, other men come into the forest with their drums and torches and sticks spinning out balls of fire and make all in this forest suffer for the stupidity of one. Unfortunately, the man cub's parents escaped. They escaped because those three idiots, Ka, Balu and Baghira, blocked my path and allowed them to run away. So now I am hungry and I want that man cub. Go, Sher Khan, go away from here. For otherwise, I will trumpet and call the rest of our herd and we will trample you to dust. If you value your life, Sher Khan, leave my baby, go. Today, I am injured because of a cruel trap set in the jungle by the men whom you seem to love so much. Today, I'm a little weak. But remember, elephants, it will not be too long before I regain my strength. And then I will be back for the man cub and you. Remember, elephants, I will be back.
the sunrise itself. Good morning, Bagheera. Good morning, my lovely one. The most dazzling lady cobra I have ever seen. Oh, you are a darling, Baloo. A honey-coated bear, if there ever was one. Good morning, and greetings of the morning to you too, Bagheera. What keeps the panther of night awake at dawn? What brings the two wisest heads of the forest to see me? Well, why it, Ka? It is now four summers and more since Raksha adopted the man cub she calls Prithvi. We have all watched the snotty-nosed rascal growing up, watched him play around the forest with Shaktiman and Raksha's calves. And to be honest, Baloo and I have grown quite fond of that little fellow. And I know you, Ka, like him too. I've seen you snuggling him up with that silky body of yours. Of course I'm fond of him. The only one who did not recoil from my coils the first time I coiled him up. And that wasn't with love. But since then, I love that brat. Don't tell me you tried to put your coils around that little man cub in hunger, car. Why, he would just have been a tiny mouthful for you. When did you try to eat him, car? Oh, it was almost half a full moon back, I think. I wasn't really hungry, you know. Just needed something small to snack on on my way to the rocky hills. I was actually looking for a rabbit or some such when I saw this stumbling bit of human trying to run after a lizard. First time I saw the man cub, looked a dainty little thing. Naturally, I slithered across to that man cub, coiled my tail gently around that bony body, drew him close, and looked him in the eye. <laughs> and that generally is bye bye for all. I'm amazed Prithvi lived to see another moment of daylight. I am amazed too. But let us listen to Ka's story. So, you gave him your death stare. Then what happened, Ka? Then, a miracle happened. told me that. If it has got anything to do with Prithvi, I shall protect him with my life. We know that, and that's why we've come to you. Tonight is the night of the full moon once again. Akira, the leader of all the wolf packs, the free people, will chair the forest council tonight at the Judgment Rock. And Shaktiman and Raksha will have to present Prithvi to the forest council tonight for him to be officially accepted as a forest being and formally adopted by Raksha and Shaktiman. Prithvi cannot be kept away from the court of acceptance anymore. The problem is, Akela alone cannot decide on anything. Two other members from the ruling wolf council will have to speak for Prithvi's acceptance and agree that he can roam free with the herd of Shaktiman. Otherwise, he'll be declared an outcast and ordered to leave the forest. If that happens, he won't be able to claim any protection from anyone. We fear that no wolf will speak for Prithvi. Sher Khan has become strong again. On one paw, he has been threatening the free people that if they accept Prithvi to be their own, then he 
Shere Khan, with all his kinsfolk, will consider wolves to be fair prey. On the other paw, he's bribing them with rich gifts of sambars and nilgais, promising future regular supplies if they keep their mouth shut at the voting. So we're scared. And worried. That no wolf is going to speak for Prithvi in favor of being accepted as a forest being. If no wolf speaks for Prithvi, then you, Balu, will speak. Me? <laughs> Look at me! Do you see a wolf by any chance? <laughs> oh, Balu, sometimes I feel like calling you up and shaking you till all the fur flies off your body. Don't you remember that many moons ago, when the wolves first came to this forest in search of shelter, many of the animals opposed to the new beings coming in and taking up space? It was your great-grandfather who spoke up for them and said that the forest was big enough to accommodate all. You are the eldest, Balu, and as such a respected member of the Wolf's Council, you have the right to attend, speak, and vote. By all the Samars I've ever eaten, I never knew this, Balu. I knew, but I have never attended any of those meetings, ever. The only time I interact with wolves is when their cubs come to me to learn jungle laws and end up teaching them how to drink honey. <laughs> that is because you're too lazy, Balu. If honey is near, you never want to go far. But tonight you must speak and attend for Prithvi if no one does. I will go with you just to keep a watch. For the, for the sake of Prithvi, I will trudge the long way to the judgment rock. But. What good will my lone voice do? We'll still be one vote short. The whispering winds carried your words to me. I know the problem, and I have a solution. The other vote. <laughs> the other vote will be yours, Vakira. <laughs> Mind the baki. Did my grandfather do some favors for the free people or what? Oh, not that I know of. Then, by what right shall I speak at a council controlled by wolves? And even if I do speak, why should they listen to me? Oh, they will listen to you. They will listen to you because you will invoke an ancient law of the jungle. Come close, come close, and I will tell you how. by virtue of the rights granted by our first great leader, Pratham. Welcome, Baloo. We hope you will come more often. We also have as guests who have all been granted the permission to be in our meeting by me, Sher Khan, Bagheera, and Ka. It seems that our business tonight interests all in this forest. Business, business, tonight's business. Let's finish our business quickly and go hunting. Shaktiman and Raksha's petition that the man cub 
they have adopted and read for the past four summers and monsoons be accepted as one of us. Shakti Man and Raksha will have no voice in the matter. Two from amongst ruling Wolf Council must say I for Prithvi to be allowed to become a forest being. I object the man cub belongs to me. Give him back to no. me. No, I found him. We protected him. I fed him like I did my other cubs. We brought him up with, with our love. We brought, brought him up like our own. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I thank you for making the once scrawny dry snack into a juicy meal, much more appetizing. Now that the matter is settled, I will take the man cub Stop! Away. Silence! Stop! Sit silent and still, Sher Khan, or else leave! For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, a kid has a jolly good fellow, which nobody can deny, which nobody can deny, which nobody can deny. A kid has a jolly good fellow, which she can't deny. Hip hip hooray! Can we get back to business? Sorry, old chap, but we just couldn't help it. I'd go as far as to say we were just helpless. But now to business at Akela time. Look ye, O oh wolves, look ye. Look carefully at Prithvi and say I or nothing. Remember, we need just two eyes. What? Not one eye for my child? I, I say I. Let Prithvi be one of the free people. I object. If I have no voice in the council, then how can Balu the bear have one? A bear who bears no resemblance to the world. Objection overruled. If you had listened to me, Sher Khan, I said at the very outset that Balu is an honorary member of this council by virtue of the rights granted by our first great leader, Pratham. He has a voice. Thank you, Balu. Thank you, Akela. Will no one else say I for our Prithvi? I too say I. Let Prithvi be a part of Raksha and Shakti Ma's herd. I object. Sustain. Bagheera, friend as you are, I have to rule that you have no voice to guide this council. But I have, by ancient law of the jungle, framed by our great forefathers, at a time when the yonder hills were still young, any denizen of the forest can buy a voice in any council meeting by providing a meal to all the council members. Provided, of course, the offer of the meal is accepted. Nonsense! I've never heard of such a law. Bakira speaks the truth. Ask the old banyan tree on the cliff by the murmuring stream. He will tell you that such a law exists. I remember now. What do you offer, Bakira? Behind that great rock lie two large sambars freshly hunted. Accept it, we, and the sambars are for you wolves to feast on. Think ye, O wolves, think. Do you accept, Bakira, the dark one's offering? If you do, then Prithvi becomes a forest being. Now it seems that someone is talking, the way all talk should be done. His talk is used in our tummy. We all say that that's the way to do it. Dinner for nothing and chambers for free. We all say that that's the way to do it. We accept the offer, we guys ain't dumb. Maybe get a city from eating too much. That ain't nothing when we go not to hunt. We ain't got a run for our dinner. We got Shakti Man and Raksha, from tonight, 
Rizvi officially becomes a part of your family. Look after him and raise him well. We will do as you say, Akela. Thank you, Akela. You are a true leader. Thank you, my friends. One last thing before I go. I hope Ka, Bagheera, and Baloo will be Prithvi's friends and mentors forever. For being from man, he will face more challenges than a real denizen of the forest does. Not only from forest beings, but from his own kind as well. We will be with him for as long as he needs us. For that's what we're here for! Maiden, or through with the juvenile antics. Maybe you can join me for a wholesome breakfast of coconut and honey. A much better proposition would be a fat little bunny. Honey and bunny, God, you two are so funny. When the delicious dear warm in the morning, bright and sunny. You two have become poets now. Spare me with my crunchy coconut and my golden honey. Just let me be. Ah, look who's a poet now. Breaking news, Baloo the bear has become unbearably romantic. Ooh la la, romantic. But hush, someone come. Good morning, my friends. Good morning. Good, Good morning, morning, Raksha. Raksha. Good, Good morning, morning Shakti Man. And hello, little one. Hello. Wise old Baloo, warrior supreme Bagheera, and the ever hypnotic Ka. And of course, the golden one, Tabaki. We have brought our dear Prithvi to you for his lessons to start. If you three teach him with the wisdom that you have, I know and Shaktiman knows that one day our Prithvi will be the bridge between the world of humans and the world of forest beings. So that one day we all can love and respect each other. Please accept him as your disciple. Not as a disciple, but as our own child. As much as a child to us as he is to you. For after all, we are your friends, aren't we? Of course we are! We are your friends, we are your friends, we are your friends to the very end. When you're alone, when you're alone, who comes around? Who comes around to pluck you up? To pluck you up when you are down. When you are down and when you're out.
That won't take too long. Go in peace, my friends. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 I will teach Prithvi to be the greatest warrior this forest has ever seen. I will teach him to be enchanting, hypnotic, and graceful. I will teach him the different tongues of the jungle. And I will teach him that whatever darkness life may bring forth, there will always be some light burning somewhere. That'll be the most important lesson he learns, the Baki. But my lesson is a little simpler. I will teach him the laws of the jungle and some human tongue. Don't tell me. You know the language of the humans, too. I know enough. You have forgotten that before I came to the forest, I was a captive in what the humans call a circus. I learned a lot of their tricks and a lot of their language until my parents escaped with me from that hell. I remember like yesterday. The cruelty, the jealousy, the greed, the selfishness. The lust for more and still more. How can I ever forget? And that is why I will also teach Prithvi the most important lesson in life. The wisdom of being satisfied and happy with just <laughs> the bare necessities of life. Look for the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. Forget about your worries. everyone called him when he was younger. He would carry the message of being happy with just the bare necessities to the world. No greed, so no conflict. Ah, uh, well, Prithvi may have become the iron man of the jungle and a messenger of all that is good. But to us, he will always remain the little frog of the jungle. No, look at him. He's a jungle knight, finely clothed in an armor of shining leaves, stitched by the tailor birds. He is Prithvi the knight. No, no, no. I tend to agree with Bhagira. Hardly a knight for like Prithvi, the jungly of the jungle. Now that you two say it, I am beginning to see what you see. Knight with a tit, jungle, jungly. The, the jungly, jungly of, of the, the jungle. jungle. Okay, let me be a jungly then. After all, how can I disobey my teachers? Yahoo! Yahoo! Yahoo!
thirsty. I need a long drink of water and a nice cool swim. So do I, but just thinking of that long walk down to the Pench River makes me feel doubly tired. Can't be helped, dear chap. All the nearby water holes have dried up. Yes, the rains have not visited us in many, many months. No dark clouds in the sky. I can feel the earth drying up fast. Well, there is still some water in the river. And since the river will not come to us, we must go to him. Let's go.